We talked about the concepts of dynamics, specifically mass, damping, and loads of air with time. But let's also talk about the different domains which we'll encounter in the field of dynamics. The two domains are the time domain and the frequency domain. Now when in the time domain, we're solving the response of the structure with respect to time. This is typically the easiest and of course most intuitive because let's face it, it's the domain we all live in. Things happen in sequence as time marches perpetually forward. In this car crash footage, we have three shots in sequence of time. Here, maybe we're interested in the position of the car or the detailed performance of the occupant safety system of the car at each time point. Or in this other example, where we want to study the behavior of the building during an earthquake. Models of buildings like these can be made and excited with a time history of acceleration loading that replicates the motion of the earth during an earthquake. But what if we have a steam turbine, which is used to generate electricity? It may rotate at different RPMs or frequencies, especially on startup and shutdown. Why not just keep solving each RPM as an independent time history? That might seem logical, right? Well, the challenge is, we have many such cases, the solution of all these could take weeks or months on a computer and typically that's not feasible. In these such cases, we can change our perspective to view the problem in the frequency domain instead of the time domain. Let's change our horizontal axis to frequency and make the vertical axis the peak magnitude of that frequency so we can represent that steady state condition as a point on this frequency response plot. So now we are no longer solving in time, but rather in frequency. While there are some limitations to the method, we'll find many structural dynamics problems can be solved this way. So remember that earthquake example? The time history of loading clearly varied with time, but we can transform the data to the frequency domain where the final time history is considered to be a summation of many frequencies and their respective amplitudes. This technique can give us frequency domain-based loading, which we can apply to the building to quickly understand the maximum deformation expected. Running a simulation model of this building in the time domain may take hours to days, while getting an approximate critical assessment may only take seconds to minutes in the frequency domain. The study of frequency domain-based dynamics is often called linear dynamics, and the primary limitation is stated right in its name. It assumes everything is linear. So while there will be times we won't be able to assume the structure is linear, in many cases we can and in fact. It is particularly useful for harmonic analysis, where our loading is periodic, think sinusoidal. The vibration of a car engine or an electric toothbrush are great examples of harmonic motion. We'll dive into harmonic motion and analysis in a future section.